All right. Um, <clears throat> we have homework today, uploaded already. It is about redraw, redraw some figure. Okay. When you draw it, it's not like drawing by hand. You use Excel, you calculate the numerical value. Okay. If you draw it by hand, I consider that you didn't do it. So figure of this, you have just three figure. The last four just put it on top of each other. So let's take a look at number three. Draw page two o seven. So it is this figure. Okay, you have to draw it with Excel. This means you have to get numerical value of each point on this line. Connect the dot together to form the line, okay, and then lay it on top of each other. To lay it on top of each other, Control C to copy this picture and put it over here. Control V. You know how to do that, no doubt, okay. And you create your graph with your numerical value. You right click on the space over here somewhere. Uh, let me delete the grid line. So I right click, I click fill, no fill. Okay. I put it over here, it's still opaque. I shrink this a little bit. So I right click on the area outside, no fill again. So now it's not opaque and I, have, I can put it on top of each other. The axis have to match. You see this 400? So this graph, the special thing with this graph is the top part is linear. I mean semi-log. The bottom part is log-log. So you have to make two graphs and connect them together. I show you the, the top one. I match 400 and minus 100. Okay. So this line, let me use a darker line. Cannot see either. Uh, the grid line. Okay. Grid line. I use darker one. Okay, let's use black so that I can see. For now, I use black. Okay, now you see, right? It's go from 400 to minus 100. So I shrink to make it match over there. Okay, shrink to make it match. And I can tell if my graph, okay, it's not a graph yet, let's connect the dot. Solid line. I can see if my graph stay on top of the graph in the book or not. Okay. I already scanned the graph in the book for you in the presentation slide and I upload uh, whole part format so you can lay it on top like this. And you show me that it's match. Okay. It should match. Unless you didn't do anything, then it doesn't match. Okay. And on the bottom part, you make another graph, then you layer it on top. Okay, so everything should look just like what you have in the book. Okay? And another true graph is a graph in, uh, that is about, um, analog flow. Okay, analog flow that you have 5C square, you remember that? Another true graph is this one. This line, you draw three lines, show the numerical value, connect the dot together to form the line, lay it on top. So you should use dash line, maybe red, and that will be black, so that I can tell that they stay on top of each other. And it's all correct, okay? If you are not going to make it correct, make sure that you do something. You do something means you actually type in the equation. If you just 
put something that is totally irrelevant into this, I consider that you didn't do it, okay? And another one is this line. This graph I just asked you to do, draw that, not the rest, because typically we don't use the rest. Okay? Equate, what is this equation for? This, this line for? Get pressure drop, right? And it's come from that combined momentum equation. You already have equation in the book, that one. Very easy to draw, okay? You draw phi c squared with uh, delta L two dot. So that is about annular flow. Should be quick, okay? So that you have happy Thanksgiving. How about that? Let's go back. I didn't, I didn't post that yet, but it is like what it is in the. You can start doing it. It is just like this. It is just like. Uh, no. That extra part that you're talking about. Understand that I didn't post it yet. Uh, I'm talking about it every time, right? The, the explanation on the actual thing that I'm going to post is look just like this. Extra part optional, 10% of the total grade, blah, 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 read it, okay? This additional part, expect about that much out, expect about that much out work, calculate minus dpdz for the case where theta equal to zero, d equal to five, VS equal to 1, VS equal to 1, 10, and 100. You actually have those three parts, okay? Lay it on top of that. Use same fluid as Tetrabani used. Use full form Tetrabani. Use RKF45 to solve the profile, okay? RKF45, that's why it takes about 4 to 8 hours. Read the Wikipedia on how to do RKF45. First 50%, no, this we got this. But basically, show film profile. Of course, you will get the full form. I'll time it soon. And if you start, you don't lose any of your effort. Okay? It will be this. And you should do it. And this one is not due completion. Okay? It's based on the correction. If you act crazy, if you do it wrong, you just get zero. If you didn't do again for five, you just get zero. Okay? Because this is a bonus already. Alright? And if you do like what you typically do in your homework, that I cannot grade it, and you expect to get 10 like your homework, no. When you show me Excel file and a bunch of number, I just straight give you maybe okay three. I don't understand. What are you trying to say? You don't say anything, you just throw a bunch of numbers. I don't understand it. That work was the time for the homework because it's due completion. In the homework, I actually dig into it and find out what actually you're doing. Even in take home exam, I actually look into it. Okay, see what you're actually doing. But this thing, you made me do that. Okay, just get one point out of 10. Don't want to grade it because you don't want to do it. So you have explanation. You have the raw file and the actual report that explain me what are you doing, how do you get the result. Put the graph in the report, okay? And show it, okay? How do you get that? Show type equation, not copy and paste. Okay, do do it good, okay? Let's say you just copy and paste the equation instead of ten. You should get ten. I give you okay. Just give this guy six because he don't want to type it. Just like that. It's a report that worth extra part. Okay. Show not if it is homework, I don't mind. You copy and paste, okay, it's due completion. You go did you do it? You get 10. But this is another graduate level quality. Okay? When it is an extra point. The take home exam, those things great, pretty like generous. Even that, uh, I still didn't post anything yet because I think I have to go through it again to find somewhere to give you more part. Okay? 
Alright. But this thing, I have post an actual detail. You actually need that paper. Alright? And if you happen to use MATLAB, show me the code. Make a presentation. If you the only case where you don't do anything is like if you use Excel, use Python, C or Fortran, the language that I can compile in my computer. MATLAB, a little bit license problem, so you have to show me. I have to make a presentation. If you happen to use Java, you have to make a presentation. Okay? Right. Uh, right now it's 11.10. Uh, we have Victor here. Isaac here. Yash, not here, of course. And Han, you're here. Okay, today we missed this one still then. Okay. And we will check if he has it. So we call the role, right? Today we call the role. Uh, let's get back to the lecture. Oh, not that one. Last time, we show, we go through what happened if angle is not zero or is not vertical upward. What happened to the flow pattern? Okay, we show all that. So the next step is the ex there are two methods. Extension of the existing model, that method one, we showed to you last time. Method two, comprehensive model, we didn't show you yet, I didn't go through that yet. Extension of the existing model, if we want to extend title data model to other model, we do this, okay? From 0 to 10, we use title doubler. More than 10, we say, okay, <coughs> transition E, use this, but exit center of bubble flow pattern, use that. So this is extension of the current model, not as good as comprehensive model, okay? And then we go through, okay, this bubble flow, F and G, that is extension of the current model, got it? J and H, that is extension, not the comprehensive model yet. So this is, hey, if I don't know the comprehensive model, I want to know flow pattern prediction for the case of inclined flow. What do I do? I can extend the current vertical flow model and horizontal flow model like that. Okay, that is extension. What about double flow? If I want to extend our flow, I do this. Transition A, use that for a trifold pattern or something, that's the extension. And that's transition B, transition F, and transition G. So the last, last time that we go through is how to extend the existing horizontal flow model to the case of other angle. Okay, this is extension. Double flow inclines, so transition L, when it's between z minus 90 and minus 70, this is the extension, right? Transition L. And what about vertical double flow? We cannot extend it, so we make a new model. Okay, a new model which is uh, <coughs> falling field. And we show um, moment of balance for the falling field. And we stop that, right? Did we, did we stop there? We get through a little bit. Okay. Moment of balance of the falling frame. Those are the equation. We have one equation, one unknown. We can solve it. That's falling frame, right? And if we are to extend that, it's not a comprehensive model yet. For transition B, this is how we do it. So we, do we have a conflict? like which one to use, which one to not use. Not really, because what you have seen is not the best version yet. What you have seen is, how do we extend the current knowledge to the case of, oh, so this case is like a uh, falling film. So if you want to make falling film flow pattern transition criteria, 
we extend it, we use AL over AP equal to pi 35, and AL and AP come from the equilibrium annular uh, flow, combined momentum equation. So you saw combined momentum equation of falling field. Then that is for vertical downward, transition B. Okay. So right now it's not quite connected yet. We have an, uh, vertical downward, transition F, vertical downward, transition G, transition E. So this thing is basically the same as what we have for vertical flow, vertical upward, but this is just minus 90 degree, okay? So this is just minus 90 degree. So what we have so far is extension of horizontal model and vertical model for the, any angle between 0 and 90. And you have from 0 to minus like 80, minus 90, but for vertical downward, we use new model, equilibrium annular falling field. Okay. So that will tell, hey, look, we use that model, we get this line for transition B, transition B, okay, we have transition F, transition E, those thing is from minus that 90. So minus 90 degree is have its own flow pattern transition calculation. Okay, we didn't link to any angle yet. If it is minus 90 degree, you calculate transition F like this, G like that, E like that, transition B like that, and that value come from combined momentum equation. This is not quite linked to, so this is double vertical flow model, this is not quite linked to transition L when it is like, okay, minus 80, minus 70 or something. So this is inclined, near vertical but not vertical. Okay, that is transition L. So this is like extension of the current model. So when you use transition L, you don't have anything to do with falling field momentum balance yet. Okay. So if you extend transition B, HL over D equal to pi 35. So that is like <coughs> um, for inclined downward, not 90 degree downward. F and G, this is A inclined downward. Okay. So we have three parts. Zero to 90 degree, and zero to minus 80 or minus 89 or something, and you have perfect for uh, downward vertical flow. And we make the flow pattern transition for each of them. Make sense? And most of them are very similar to the flow pattern transition that you already know, except transition L. Okay? Now there's a problem of those things that we talked about last time. When we have those things, there's a change in the flow pattern. Right? If you use minus 90 degree, one transient criterion, you use minus 80 degree, or 80, 89 to minus 89 to 0 degree, another one. So minus 90 is one flow pattern criterion, minus 89, to zero is another one, and uh, minus 89 to minus 10, and minus 10 to plus 10, use tetra double, plus 10 to like 80, use another one, 80 to 90, use another one. It works, but there's a discontinuity. When there's a discontinuity, um, it crash. Crash the iterative method. Okay. It could potentially crash that, because what? You, you need uh, something that is differentiable, okay, differentiable. But when it changed abruptly, it's not differentiable, uh, we cannot really integrate it. So let's say you have dp by dz equal to some formula, right? Pressure drop versus distance. dp by dz equal to some formula. So at point A, you have one flow pattern. At point B, I mean front of the cell and back of the cell, 
is happen to different flow pattern, and you try to use get average and get something, it may not differentiable. Okay, they fix that by use the model that works for every angle. Okay, we have more than two, but I cover just two. Go mess it all, and Zhang Yunfan model. Okay, go mess it all is kind of combined. It's used by me. 86, 87, and to get flow pattern. Once you know the flow pattern, it calculates very well. Use the formula of each flow pattern to calculate pressure drop of that flow pattern. Giant unified model based on slug flow. Everything, if you look at, or if you go over there again, it, it's based on slug flow. So let's see your homework first. Okay. Unified model that work for any angle from Bani, 1986. Transient A. Okay. Bani show that transient A from Tatel Dackler, 76, work for every angle already. So we keep it. Okay. Transition J, F, and G has to modify. Okay. We modify a lot on transient J. Transient F and G we modify a little bit to allow it to be able to work for every angle. Okay, you have minus 90 to 90 degree. So transient J, today we're going to go over it, how we modify transient J so that it works every cases, every angle. Okay. The step is, okay, developed the combined momentum equation of angular flow, okay, but with no entrainment. No entrainment. You get that equation, okay. <coughs> so, check this equation with your combined momentum equation of your angular flow. I mean, page 160. Is it the same? Is it the same? I have minus tau w l s l o a f minus rho l minus rho c plus tau i s i. The signs kind of kind of the same. Okay. Instead of a f, this one just a l. Instead of rho c, that one just rho g. Just that. So this means this equation is for upward flow or downward flow. Look at your book. 160. 160 is for upward flow, so that equation will be for upward flow. Make sense? I said you, you with me? Got it? The equation is just the same. They just change from AF to AL, rho C to rho G, because there's no entrainment. It's upward flow, but no entrainment, okay? No droplet. And but we did that on purpose, okay? With this equation, everything very close, is very close to what you have studied already, except for very close to the case of falling film, except the sign. Almost the same as the case of upper vertical angular flow, except no entrainment. F e equal to zero. Okay. So basically, they have combined momentum equation. Rearrange it. Okay. Until they get this form. Tau i as a function of some other dimensionless parameter. Where does this equation come from? Combined momentum equation. How do they combine it? Minus or plus? Minus. Because minus dpdr cancel. You don't have pressure drop when you delay in this equation, right? So it's a combined momentum equation. But we rearrange it so that it's a tau i as a function of something else. So this equation tells me how much Interficial shear stress is needed to
to maintain thin thickness of delta L. Okay? So it's required tau I. <coughs> so this equation, does it work for any angle? Yes, it does. Just if you happen to put like double flow, put theta as negative value, and sine theta of sine minus 10 will be minus sine 10 or something, okay? It works for any angle. So, they have to plot this equation. When they plot this equation, plot what? Tau i versus film thickness. So, what I need to show is this. If you use plot combined momentum equation between thickness and tau i, there's a relationship. There is a certain tau i that is needed to maintain that film thickness. Okay. If you want thick film, you need more tau. Don't you think so? Or it's vice versa? Ah, oh, let's take a look at the equation. I think it's vice versa. So this is uh, So let's take a look at this line. Okay. This line. At a certain of VST. So if I want thick film, or if I want thin film, this line says, if I want very thin film, I need a lot more tau i for the left side. Okay. On the right side, it says, if I want very thick film, I don't need no tau i. So there's a left side and right side. What does it mean? Okay, it's, it's, it's not quite making sense, but they show this. For the case of Upward flow. There's a minimum point, and the left side happen to be film moving up. The right hand side happen to be film moving down. So this line, okay. See this line. When it have minimum point, minimum point is right there. The left side film going up, right? The right hand side is this upper flow, like I mean gas going up, but liquid fall, film fall down on the right side. If you think about it, let's say both phase going up. So if you have gas flow faster, what happens? It's kind of push liquid against the wall more and you get thinner and thinner and thinner, and thinner film, right? If both flowing up. So the faster gas that you flow, the more shear stress you have, it's occupied, like it's expand, like it's occupied the core part of the pipe. So you have thin film. Make sense? If both flowing up. But if you allow liquid to fall down, and you need thicker film, okay? So if liquid fall down, you have high shear stress, Film fall down, combined momentum equation say, hey, if you have more shear, you get thicker film when it's falling down. Maybe it's not intuitively like making sense much, but from the solving this, I mean plotting this, okay, give you that. Yes? But if we have the, the previous plot, if we have, for example, zero, VSL, uh, we have that positive number. VSL of 0.1. 0 0.1. So that means that the flow, the liquid flow, we have a positive liquid flow going up. Right? The left side, I mean this line, I break the line with that line, okay? On the left side, it has a minimum point. On the left side, like this is 0 0.1. On the left side, if you have more shear, the film get thinner and everything flowing up. Okay. So if we are in a pipe in a well board, okay. that means that 
we have liquid. In the right side, we will have liquid. Falling down. So what does it mean? The right hand side means if you have vertical upward flow, right hand side, even though it shows when you plot the combined momentum equation, but it's not stable and not stable. If you ever go to the right hand side, it's not a stable flow. That's why eventually I will show you this. Okay. Right hand side is slack flow. So when, when you look at this line, Combined momentum equation when you plot it, you get that line, right? The left side for vertical flow is half minimum point. But for downward flow, it doesn't have minimum point. Okay, the minimum having minimum point or not depend on like <coughs> depend on flow rate, yes, and also depend on angle. In this graph, everything is vertical upward flow. Everything vertical upward flow. There's something like this. Look at zero degree. You don't have minimum point. Minus 10, you don't have minimum point. Minus 90, you don't have minimum point. But when you do 90 degree upward, yes, combined with the equation in terms of tau i tilde versus delta tilde has minimum point. Okay. On the left side, if you have minimum point, on the left side, is stable. On the right side, it's not stable. But that's not just one criterion. It's not just that. So this is a relationship between required shear stress to make that mesh film thickness. It's just one thing. Okay. Let's keep looking at it. <coughs> so where's the minimum point? Differentiate it make it equal to zero. So when the slope equal to zero, at that point, the slope equal to zero, right? Slope equal to zero, that's minimum point. So basically, by me differentiate that equation, set it equal to zero, get that equation. And that equation is the equation for that dotted line, thick dotted line in the middle, I and mean, that line, okay? All right. The differential strain is based on the supply Vsg at a certain film thickness. Okay, this one is tau i versus delta, right from combined momentum equation. Okay. Another one is the regular expression for tau i. Look at this. Tau i equal to one half f rho v square. Or if you rearrange it, Vg is Vsg over, over 1 minus 2 delta square, Fi equal to that, what is that? Closure relationship, right? Capital I equal to something. And Fsg equal to that. What is this one? This is tau I that you get based on Vsg that you give. Does it link to the combined momentum equation? No. You calculate it separately. The top one is a required tau i to maintain the film thickness. The bottom one shows how much tau i you're going to get if you supply that much VSG. Got it? So if you put a little bit of VSG, you don't get much tau i. If you put more VSG, you get more tau i. If you put a lot more VST, you get more tau i, a lot more tau i. Okay. So that's equation 5 part 20. Where's equation 5 part 20? That vertical line. So it's a relationship between tau i and film thickness at different VST. If we have more VST, look. I change from VSG equal to 6 to 8 to 10. So if I increase more VSG, I get more tau i. The cross point between tau i that you're going to get based on the input VSG and the required tau i for film thickness from the combined momentum equation, that cross point is a solution of 
the total equation. So what can happen is, let's say, hey, I want uh, that mesh film thickness. If I want that mesh film thickness, and I have VSL of point 0.1, if I want that much fittingness, I have VSL of 0.1, what should be my VSG? Okay, maybe 25. So that point tail both VSL and VSG. Okay. So that combined momentum equation, when you look at it from the required tau i, I have VSL or whatever, I don't have VSG. Where's VSC? No, nothing. No VST. Because when we start, we start from this equation. And tau, and we have that. And tau i. Tau i is actually have VST already, but the rest doesn't have VST, right? That's why this line, the solid line, doesn't have VST. So the cross point tells us if you want that film thickness, you need that much tau i and you need that much VST. Um, is this equation uh, valid for anything? Look, it's not tau i, it's tau i tilde, it's tau i over rho l minus rho g, right? It's not just tau i. And that is like big thickness. <coughs> but that VSD, um, okay, we have VSD over there, rho fi. Okay, new g. So it, it it should be fine because we when we plot we plot tau i we didn't plot like VSG. If we plot VSG, it will depend upon viscosity or something like that. Okay. So this equation, this line from combined momentum equation, require tau i to maintain that much fit thickness. That line is from the supply that require VSG to maintain that tau i. Yeah, but, yeah, but in the case we, we need to fix the VSG and different film thickness to calculate the VSG. Right. This graph, we don't use it for any calculation. Not yet, not yet, not yet. All right, you, you follow that. No question about that. The pressure drop is the purpose that we do this unified model is not for pressure drop. Why? Because it doesn't have entrainment fraction. The purpose that we do this is to find out what is the flow pattern. No question there.